Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Jalanta, for the introduction. Um, I'm here to just give you a presentation on the findings that we found around the pilot project that was carried out in Riscommon County Council, um, in the County Riscommon, sorry, um, and just give an overview of what we have observed um, through, through time. Um, I was given the title of this presentation, um, and I smiled initially when I saw it. It refers to environment compliance. Environment compliance infers regulatory compliance. What I've seen this project do is gone beyond regulatory compliance and achieved uh, good foundations in terms of uh, overall uh, sustainability and more res uh, re resilience in our, in our environments. To provide a bit of context for myself um, and our Roscommon itself, that's lovely County Roscommon where we are today. Um, the green areas that are indicated on the map are known or marked out, delineated zones of contribution for public water supplies, with the beige areas being source protection areas that have been mapped um, through the National Federation and the Geologic Geological Survey of Ireland. I've been working in this area for over 10 years. A um, couple of things that I have observed over time, I've been involved in cryptosporidium. Geraldine has already referred about cryptosporidium outbreaks. We have been, in, on the regulatory side of things, from what we have found is after about a period of two years, people are reverting back to what they would have done prior, prior to this. And I hope through the, the process of this presentation, it'll, it'll demonstrate this project has the potential to get more engagement and for, for a longer term, more sustainable um, management of our environment. Um, Patrick has put up this slide referring to the participating group water schemes as it is. I'm just highlighting these um, particular scheme areas. It'll, it'll become more to the fore as later on in the presentation in terms of compliance in, in, in inverted commas. Emphasis on this program has been around education and awareness, providing the tools to people necessary to carry out the activities. Pesticide users, Patrick has also referred to that. One area where I came in directly involved myself is in relation to nutrient management planning. Um, and, it, and the import of nutrients by landowners within, within the source protection areas. Again, you'll hear this mentioned a couple of times, enhanced protection measures that have been in. Patrick has mentioned some of them, um, Sean has mentioned others. These are supplementary measures that go above and beyond our regulatory compliance with, within, within our current regulations. As I say, central to the whole thing is regulatory compliance. They are, are enhanced and supplementary measures are um, going to be demonstrated through, through the course of this presentation. Over the last number of years, I said I'm about 10 years working in this area, I've had interactions, Sean has mentioned stakeholders, the communities basically within our areas. This involves farmers, landowners, the forestry sector, householders. Pre and post um, and during the project, I had interactions with the various landowners as well. One thing that has really come to the, my mind um, when I had an engagement, before this pilot project, I had engagement um, around the cryptosporidium outbreaks and various other breakdowns, we'd say, in, in the source, in the, the group scheme sources. One landowner that I remember meeting, um, there was a regulatory issue. I'm a regulator, that's my job. My function is I have to do what I have to do. I uh, use my full, full powers available to me. I met one individual farmer, he was not engaged. He was, I could call him depressed. He didn't want to know, he knew he had a problem. He didn't want to get involved in the remediation of it. During the project, I met with him. And after the project, I met with him. That man is a different man. He's now more engaged. He understands how his activities on the farm level can potentially impact on water quality. He's now, he's come back to his youth, I suppose. He's using folklore and stories that were passed down about linkages between various swally holes and various enclosed depressions that were in his local area that, are, that he now has transferred that they're linking back to the, the source in, in, in this case. I can only put that down to the project and the way the, the collaboration, the, the education of, of the individual landowners and the farmers, and that farmer in particular, I, I'll, I'll never forget him, but it's a, it was a very interesting, interesting outcome. In relation to forestry, we would have been issuing or having um, inputs into terms of forestation assessments, 
clear felling operations and roads around forestry. The forestry sector, when they got an understanding of where they again sat within the landscape, they readily implemented um, improvement measures and some of those will become obvious in the next couple of photographs. And again, householders, we would have been involved in, it was referenced here earlier on this morning in terms of the NIP inspections or the septic tank inspections around the households. The householders didn't have an understanding again of where they sat in among the landscape. Now they do. We did the inspections last year. They understood that if they didn't manage their septic tank system, the potential impact that it can have on their source. That is telling me this project has got just the right balance in terms of engagement of, with, with the public. Some of the measures that were introduced, I referred already to some of the forestry operations. Um, this one in particular, sorry, no. There's an area I want to point out here in terms of the forestry. This was one, a clear fill operation. What you have here is what's called brash that has been, as a result of the clear fill, it's basically the branches that haven't been of no economic value to, to the forestry operator. These are placed within a 10 metre area of a, this adjoining land drain. And the next photograph will give you an example of where of where, thanks, um, where, where these, where these um, what this drain actually looked like uh, on the day that I, they carried out the inspection. That's the land drain. I don't, it's, not, it's not clear on, on the main screen, but maybe on the televisions it is. That is extreme algal growth in that. That tells us there's enrichment, there's nutrients in the system that shouldn't be there. That algal growth was linked to a drain, an old forestry drain that was going rough, roughly across here. And that algal growth continued for a distance of about 100 to 150 metres. That drain flows, as I'm standing taking the photograph, flows to my back, and it actually goes into a swally hole, which is directly linked to one of our group scheme sources. Um, which was part of the reason why I was on the site that day. What happened is the forestry came along and, and undertook to do some works, the forestry operators themselves. They have now put in, or had at that stage, put in an increased buffer resistance. This is now 25 metres wide. Where the drain was originally crossing over, um, or roughly here, they've introduced a swale-type system to bind the nutrients, to, to limit the overflow of, of nutrients into the system as well as putting in a, a, a swale type system over here. I haven't a photograph, and I'm sorry that I didn't get a photograph of the after, but that drain was actually flowing clean within, within a number of months, so it, it had um, its benefits in, in terms of, of overall um, to the environment, and as I said, there is a swally hole behind us. This. this is another area of forestry where some activities were carried out. Again, on the boundary here being high, highlighted, there's a land drain, but roughly where my cursor is here now at the moment, there's actually a swally hole, which is linked to another swally hole, which is 20 metres to my right, and back to another at my back as I'm taking this photograph, there's another swally hole 50 metres behind me. We have two things that has happened here. There's trees, a line of trees actually planted along here, again inside the buffers, and that's on the second line, and we have a land drain running across here. Again, there's a direct discharge towards the, the swally holes in, in this case. Works completed by the forestry again. We have now, trees have been removed. We have a new swale put in here for the want of a better description. The direct discharge to a water course and to the swally hole has been limited. And you can see here, there's water ponding near, near where the swally hole is. And that's allowing the natural attenuation. And over time, this was fairly quickly after the works were completed within about two months. That now is a full, fully grassed area. So when, again, it, it demonstrates that when the, the, the actors or the stakeholders of the community, whatever you want to what, refer to people as, when they're given the tools, they put the measures in place and they're ready to engage with us. The last um, photograph i show you here is actually relating to the previous photograph, which is part of the improvement works which are carried out through the, through the pilot scheme in terms of those uh, hedgerow planting, there was fences installed and additional buffers areas installed for the application of nutrients. This picture was taken before the improvement works were carried out in the photograph on the screen now. And what we're seeing is the actual bed of that drain has been scoured out because of such a level of flow of water coming off that system. Again, I hold my hand up, I didn't take an after. 
but you can take it that that now has improved, the, the scoured note has been, has been reduced. This landowner that was involved here also was involved in importing um, organic fertilizers, sludges, industrial sludges from, from outside his farm sources. But when he was given the information, the tools, the understanding of, of what the impact of this is, just at the edge of my photograph here where there's a cursor, there's another swallow hole. This is a very complicated karst area, but that, that swallow hole is actually linked again to our group water scores. When he got the knowledge and understanding of that, he, he, say, he put his hands up and said, I'm not going to use in that field for, for that activity anymore. He changed his farm practices. He's still actively farming the land, but he's just changed his practices around it. Now, I put a caveat up. If anyone is afraid of bees, don't scream for the next slide. That's all I have to say. I am a farmer beekeeper, and I could see from the, the use of the bees in terms of an engagement mechanism around um, getting community involvement. Sean has already referred to it in terms of people readily identify with, it, if I identify with it, but also the biodiversity element coming through. I'm, I'm actually delighted that uh, Cora Gray has been got an award. Um, Tom Rush is one of the beekeepers. He fe features in a photograph on Sean's slides um, around the, the biodiversity element. But the reason I'm putting this up as a beekeeper is to sum of the total that works for the greater good. No individual in that system is functioning without everybody else doing what they need to do. That is how communities ideally should and, and can operate. If we look at it from the point of view, I'm just highlighting here, and I'm not going to give you a talk on beekeeping, that's the queen. If we want to look at it in this case, the queen could be our aquifer, our source. So everything that's carried on by the individual bees from the youngest bee, which is here, I just highlighted that bee is about a day old. They're managing the system to allow the queen to flourish, for the hive to flourish. The eggs are here, they're being fed by the, the bees. All age classes have a function within that system. And there's a lot to be learned from that in terms of public engagement, not alienating, not isolating one part of the community, collaborative, working together. And that's, that's why I particularly like the use of the beekeeping as an engagement mechanism. So in terms of, of observations, I put these down as observations. I'm a scientist, I'm an environmental scientist by training. I like to have facts. I hadn't time to do enough research into to delving into facts, but I'll just put observations up in terms of our compliance. I took a review from the period 2008 to present, which taken a baseline from 2008 to 2018, um, and I initially considered using raw water now, the raw water or the monitoring data for our sources, there's a lot of variables. Everyone within the room can appreciate the variables that, that could be coming in. We could have extreme weather events impacting on it. We could have just changes in the groundwater regimes can have an impact on it. So I took a step back and I said, I'd look at it from the point of view of water-related complaints um, within the earlier indicated um, group water schemes, Peak Mantua, Midras Common, uh, I'm going to miss out on a few of them now, Orden, Bell and Tubber. But those highlighted areas, you see when the, when the deck of slides is put out, um, published later. We've seen an 80% reduction in, in environment water-related complaints. Now, when I say environment water-related complaints, I'm talking about complaints relating to agricultural activities, septic tanks. I'm talking about discharges, one-off discharges. In that period, we've seen an 80% reduction. It's suggesting this pilot project and, and the way it has been got the engagement of the entire community together has led to an improvement in our compliance. We we'll call it compliance. I, I don't like that term too much, but it's our compliance. I would have worked on various other projects over the years um, on the waste side of the house and on the water side of the house. And invariably, when we go into an area to work, complaint, complaint rates actually go up, not down. So this is, again, suggesting that this the pilot project has got the the engagement of the entire community um, in, in a better manner than, than just regulatory compliance has. So there's enhanced awareness, again, is the, for potential activities and their impact on the environment. And, and there in our waters, it's all our waters, it's in our own interest. But again, it was about providing the tools, the measures to mitigate the potential effects for, for that. So we did see increased collaboration between stakeholders. Sean has talked about stakeholders already. But stakeholders 
in both a state level and local level. And th this project endeavoured not to alienate one group of stakeholders over another, one, not, or one individual over the other. It was about working together. The project demonstrates that the communities will engage with protection measures when given the right tools, measures and guidance. And that, that's kind of key. Um, education and awareness has been central, central to the whole, the whole program being through the schools and at a community and individual level. And the regulatory compliance is again central to, to the program. I don't see myself being out of a job through these schemes. There's always a day that I, I left to do my job in terms of a, of a regulator. But this project did se seek and sought to exceed the, the minimum legal requirements that, that are set out under legislation. I'm coming now towards the end, and in terms of, of my own input in this and my own understanding of it, I gave an interview to the Royal College, uh, Jolita's uh, colleague, about the Be Well project. Two questions stood out for me around it. One was, do I think the project is sustainable? Um, the project itself won international acclaim. The use of the bees, as I referred to already, is an engagement tool. It seems to have hit a, a correct measure with the public, and. Uh, and hit a nerve where, they're, as beekeepers, they're, they're, we want to share knowledge, spread it out there. This uh, is a mechanism for doing it, so that I introduced the level of sustainability into the whole scheme. The mantra has been mentioned, and I hope Catherine and Noel, I know Noel is sitting down the back, he won't mind his photograph going up today, so. Um, I planted a tree and my garden is pesticide free. For every child that has planted that tree, they're going to come out into their garden today, tomorrow, and every day after, that tree is grown. That's a constant reminder in their head of how sustainability can be achieved. And it'll remind them we're in a group scheme area and that all the linkages are there. So that's where I see a positive. I was asked another question, are there negatives? And I hope Sean doesn't mind me referring to this, but Sean, there was the, when the question was asked, I couldn't, and I still can't think of a negative around it. But you highlighted one, funding. And when you indicated the funding, you qualified it by saying you had a lot more people who looked to engage and get involved in the scheme. That tells me something. I see that as a positive. You have now got community engagement. They want to do the better. They want to make improvements. I think that's a positive. Look at, for the, I want to acknowledge the National Federation Group Water Schemes for all their work. Um, my colleagues in the Rural Water Team, past and present, there's, there's been a number of changes o over recent times. The group water schemes, the group water schemes um, uh, managers and the, the liaison officers, and central to the whole thing is the communities within these source protection areas. Without them, we're, we're nothing. There's one quote that was sticking in my head, or an Irish saying that was sticking in my head while I was putting this presentation together. The Gaelgors, you can shoot me after if I don't get the pronunciation right, but it's Ninyart go Carla Kela, and that literally is there's no strength without unity. Strength in this instance, I'm referring to the, our, our environment and unity is our community working together. So that's me. Thank you.